Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this really cool abstract rock with water drops on it. I don't know really how to describe it, but that's what it is. So let's get started. Delete the cube and then we're going to add in an icosphere. This is what we're going to be using to create the rock. Okay, leave these settings like this and just zoom in. I'm going to go into sculpt mode and that's how we're going to be creating the shape. So go into sculpt mode and then come down here to these settings. I'm going to turn off the symmetry lock on the X because I don't want any symmetry. I want it to be like organic looking, natural. So turn off that. And then I'm going to turn on this dynamic typology. I think that's what it is. So what this does, if I was to start painting or not painting, sculpting, it will add geometry to wherever I'm uh, sculpting. And this right here determines the resolution of it. So if I go to five, it's going to be very uh, high definition. There's going to be a lot of vertices. If I turn this up to 20, there's not going to be that many vertices. So I'm going to leave it at 20. I think that is a good, uh, a good number because I don't want a lot of vertices. I'm going to be adding a uh, displacement modifier and a subdivision modifier after we create it. So I want it to be pretty low poly right now. Okay, so now just kind of play around with it. Uh, go on to top. If you press Control, it will. Um, take away and if you just if you don't press control and you click it'll add so play around with this get the right shape that you want just go around all over the place just kind of going like that we're gonna be adding a texture and a subdivision so whatever you want to do with it go ahead and play around and this is a rock it doesn't have to be uniform at all you can just completely mess it up if you want to alright how does that look Looks like I need to do a little bit on the bottom again. Also play around with the strength. Get rid of the strength a little bit and then kind of go like that. That is looking pretty good right now. Yeah. Let's just take a step back and just kind of look at it. Yeah, I think that is pretty good. Maybe scale it down along the Z. Nice, I think that's good right there. So right click on it and then come over to the add modifier section, click add modifier, subdivision surface. And then set the view to like three or so. Yeah, look at that, we have our rock. That is looking pretty cool. Okay, so now let's add in a displacement modifier to give the overall thing a little bit more, um, a little more shape. So click new and then come over to the texture. Change this from uh, image or movie to clouds. And then also we have to set the scale. So press Control A and click Scale. There we go. And then turn the strength way, way, way down. It is way too strong. It's like a weird alien meteor, meteorite or something. Turn it. Keep going down. How does that look? Is that what I want? Also, I'm going to click Smooth Shading. Hmm. You know what? I think I want this to be more and then the strength to be a lot less. So let's go 0 0.03 and turn it off and on. 0 0.03, maybe 0 0.02. Let's try that. Alright, that looks pretty good right there. And then also in the materials we're going to be taking uh, some bump map and doing some more things to make it bumpier and harder and rough. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Let's do the materials now. Open up this tab and go to the node editor. Click new and then I'm just going to name it rock. You should always get in the habit to naming your materials because once you're doing a really big scene it's going to be really hard to find the right material. I've had that problem many times. Okay so now first thing I'm going to do is add in a mix shader, so mix shader and then add in a glossy shader and plug that in. And then also I'm going to add a Fresnel node and Fresnel, I think it actually is pronounced Fresnel not Fresnel. So plug that in, what this will do is it'll just add glossy around the edges and not everywhere. Depending on where the camera is looking, it's going to add some glossiness on the outside. Leave it at there, and then I'm also going to add in another mix shader, and then another glossy shader. This one will just be the entire, uh, the entire one, because I want it to make it look like it's a little bit wet. So I'm going to go 0 0.05, maybe 0.1, I don't know yet. So let's leave this open so we can see. The next thing I'm going to do is add in the texture. So go to texture, image, texture. And this is linked in the description, so go grab that. Plug that in, and then click open. 
once you downloaded the texture, go find it. Let me see if I can find it. It should be, uh, where is it at? It should be right here. This one. Yes, this one right here. Rock Smooth 0098. Open up that image, and then also we have to UV unwrap it. So press A once or twice, click U, and let's try, let's try, no, not cylinder, a sphere projection. Let's open up the UV image editor to see. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, you know what? That's not that's not terrible. I don't see any stretches. I'm gonna scale this up so we can see it a little bit better. Yeah, it's not that bad actually. I'm that looks pretty good. You might have to do U smart projection, uh, just depending. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go back into the node editor. Okay, so now it's pretty, it, from the viewport, it doesn't look that great. And that's because we haven't added any bump yet. So I'm gonna take the color output of the image texture and plug that into the displacement of the material output. That will give it some bump and that looks better. But then I'm also going to add in a bump map. So go to vector, bump, and then take the color output and plug it into the height and then take the normal output and plug it into this normal and this normal and that will give it some bump as well cool okay you might want to play around with the strength let's go 0.8 and now let's move this over here I'm also gonna get out of that view alright also this is like really slow for me I'm just gonna turn that down to, to, to 1 on the view okay so one more thing that I want to do is add in a curves so go to color and then where's it at RGB curves and plug that in right here where it's connecting to, into the diffuse I want to give this a blue look so go over to the blue tab and then just drag this up just a little bit there we go and then also the color I'm gonna bring it down let's see how this looks rendered over on this side Although there's like no light so we might need to add some light let's just turn this up to like somewhere around there so we can see <clears throat> that's looking pretty cool I might need to go further down it looks pretty light right there what also what we could do is uh, add in a hue saturation note so go to color hue saturation plug that in right here and then turn the value down I'm gonna go 0.7 awesome okay so I'm gonna leave that as as it is I think that is good okay so now let's do the the plane so press shift a mesh plane bring it down to the bottom go into the front view and then drag it down right to the bottom and then scale it up also let's go into the front view and place our camera so we know where to rotate or what what rotation we want the rock to be on so press Control alt 0 and that will snap the camera into place move it back just a little bit and to the side somewhere around there probably looks good okay so now let's kinda just play around with this rock let's see which angle looks the best probably probably something like that is probably good let's go into this view and place it scale it down just a little bit okay rotate it alright that looks good right there let's just render it and see how that looks very cool alright so now let's add in the particle system I'm gonna scale this plane up a little bit more and then press G Y and drag it out till it's like right under the camera cool so now go into a new layer and then we're gonna add in a UV sphere I'm also gonna turn this down actually you know I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna add in um, click smooth shading and then I'm gonna add in a glass shader so click new and then change this to glass you can play around with this if you turn this down it'll become more distorted if you turn it up it'll become clearer I'm just gonna leave it right there I think that's a good number okay and then I'm also going to shift D this and then move it over here <laughs> and then I'm gonna move it to layer one as well then go into layer one and scale this down scale it along the Z and then place it on your on your rock 
I wanted one big drop and then all the rest will be just smaller uh, smaller drops so kind of place it here move it up scale Z just kind of play with it where you want it to be um, you know what I think right here would be a good spot for it scale Z Z bring it up a little bit Okay, how does that look? G, Z, Z, move it down a little bit. Okay, that is perfectly fine. Let's see how that looks. Nice, you, you can kind of barely see it. Yeah, there it's coming in now, once it's the samples are going up. Cool, okay, so now let's add it to our plane. So right click on it, come over to here and click new particle system. Change the emission type to hair, and then come down to the object. Also check advanced then come down to where the object is and click sphere the first sphere and there we can see it Oh gosh um, Come onto your second layer right click on this and then I want this to the the origin point to be on the bottom So go into edit mode press G Z holding down control you can bring it up and now the origin point is at the bottom So now I think we have to refresh this maybe No, that didn't work why did that not work? Oh gosh. All right. Um, turn up the random size almost all the way up because I like a lot of randomness between them. Also, the size maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. And then also, what I'm going to do is go into weight paint mode, go into the top view, and press T and click weight gradient. And then I'm going to drag from our camera to the back. Oh, we need to add a lot more geometry. So go into edit mode on your plane and click U, uh, click W, I mean, and subdivide it, subdivide it, sub, right about there, five times. And then go back into the, your white paint mode and click weight gradient and then drag it somewhere around there. Where is, yeah, that looks good. And then go on to your camera view, change the weight to zero, and then paint all along on the outside of your camera. Okay, on the bottom and on this side. And then go into the top view and then uh, paint all the rest of it. And what we'll do is add this, this weight paint vertex group to the density of our particle system. And so all on the outside where the blue is, there'll be no particles. And where the red is, that will be the most particles. This will save you time, especially when you're rendering grass, because that is quite annoying. What the heck are those things? I think they're probably I think there's like two of them in the same spot okay so then come down here to the vertex groups click density and click group and there you can see it awesome okay so I'm going to change some of these settings up here um, I'm gonna change this to random uh, no I'm gonna leave it at jittered and I'm gonna change the number to 500 so there's a little bit less and Let's see, let's just play around with the seed. Find one that you like. That one looks pretty good. Maybe change this up to 750. Um, okay, random size up a little bit. Okay, so I think I just fixed our problem with it going halfway through the floor. I just turned on rotation and then I changed this to Z and then I turned it off and I think it fixed it. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna change the size down now since it's a lot bigger. Uh, okay, right there. And the random size, kind of play around with that. It looks, I want more particles in the front. So if we go into weight paint mode and kind of paint, let's just change it all the way to one, paint right here so there's more particles. There we go, that is better. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to, for the material on the ground, I'm just going to change it to a mixed, mixed shader and white and glossy. So click new, diffuse, and glossy right there. Change this uh, factor to 0.2, and then everything else should be perfectly fine. Maybe even the roughness to 0.1 to give it more of a glossy look. Cool. And then I'm going to change one last thing, and then we can do a render. Come over to the render panel, scroll down, and on this uh, film section check transparency because we'll go into Photoshop and then add a really cool background add some blur and do all that sort of stuff okay now let's do the lighting so right click on this 
position it right about here and then click on this and click sun lamp. I'm going to rotate it all the way around and then make sure it's right on on uh, the rock. So right there, right there, and good. Let's just see how this looks currently. That is looking pretty cool. Um, I'm going to add in an HDR to give the overall sky a little bit of a blue look. So go to your world settings, click this button, and click environment texture. You can use any HDR you want, it doesn't really matter, just something with a blue sky. So this one right here looks pretty good. I'll leave in the description a website where you can get some free HDRs. So you can go download one of those. Okay, there we go, now we have some blue and that's looking really cool. Oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to add the particle system on our, on our rock. <laughs> so go over to the particle system, click new, and then change this to this first one. There, there we go. Then click this little plus sign so we can do some settings. I'm going to change this to about 50 because I don't want them to be that much. And also I want, I'm going to shift D this one and then go into edit mode and bring it back down the origin point in the middle. Then I'm going to come over here and switch these out. So go over to the object and change it to sphere 2. Now they're inside and that's, that's what I want. Cool, cool. Um, the random size, maybe play around with that. I think there's still too many. Let's go with, tw or actually, let's change the seed. Let's change the seed to figure out if there's a better one. Um, I think there's too many. So let's go with 30 particles and then play around with this a little bit until we find one that we like. That one's pretty good. What does the first one look like? Okay, I'm going to leave it at the first one. I like that. It's got some particles there. I'm also going to scale up this main water drop till it's a, so it's a little bit bigger. And let's try 35. Um, okay. Uh, well, uh, Alright, that one looks good right there. Let's go with the seed of 3. Alright, one last thing before we render. I'm going to do some depth of field. So go right click on your camera and then come over to here. Let's right click on this and it's called Icosphere. Then click right here and Icosphere. Change the aperture to f-stop and I really like a shallow depth of field so I'm gonna go with like a one. That looks really nice. High quality, f-stop is good right there. Okay, so let's do a test render to see how it looks. Save, save and I'm just gonna go right here, tutorial and sampling, let's go with like a 200 or so. I'm also going to turn off these right here, refractive and these uh, caustics, because nobody likes caustics, and then click render. And I'll see you guys in just a second. There we go, our render is finished, and that is looking pretty cool. There is a little bit of noise though down here. There's a couple of uh, caustics and fireflies. That can be fixed if you come down to the clamp indirect and change it to like a 3 or maybe a 2. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I might re-render it later. But for now, we're going to jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how to create the background and make it look really cool. So let's go over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on this and convert it to a smart object. So once we apply a filter, it won't be a permanent thing. We can mess with it later if we want to. The next thing I'm going to do is add a new layer and drag it to the bottom. Then I'm going to go up to, actually first, I have to change the colors. So we're going to be adding some clouds right here, and if we add clouds right now, that'll be they will be white and black, and that's because both of our colors right here are white and black. We have to change this to the equivalent color. I'm going to go with a light blue, kind of something like that probably looks good, and then I'm, the, I'm going to leave the other one at white. So then come up here to filter, render, clouds and then they will be white and blue and that's what I want. The next thing I'm going to do is add in a motion blur to the cloud. So go to filter, blur, motion blur, set the angle to something like this, at an angle this way and then the distance yeah that is perfectly fine and then click OK. Great then click here and click on this mask and then we're gonna blend the two layers together. So click your brush tool and set the hardness. You can do that by holding Alt and then right clicking and dragging. Going up and down will set the hardness. Going left to right will set the size of the brush. So I'm gonna set the hardness to zero and the size somewhere around there. 
and then I'm just gonna paint. So paint over your layer, and so it blends together, something like this, that is looking pretty cool. Same on this side. You might need to zoom in and then change the size of the brush, because I don't want it to affect the rock, just the, just the background. Um, it might be a little too much, so go into white and then paint again, and that will help. Something like that. And then let's take a step back and look. We'll zoom in here, I'll paint a little bit more over here. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna do some filter uh, camera raw on this layer and give it a really cool look. So go to filter, camera raw filter, and then just give it a second. This image will pop up and then we can change some settings right here. If you know how to use Lightroom, this will be very familiar to you. So the temperature is just how warm and how, or how cold the image feels. So I'm gonna go for a nice cold image. Then the exposure I might bring up just a tiny bit. Let's go 0.4. The contrast I'm gonna bring up. And then the highlights, you can kind of play around with them. Doesn't really matter. The shadows I'll bring down. The whites, let's see here. I'll bring them up just a little bit. The clarity I'm gonna bring up as well. And then the vibrance I'm gonna bring up too. That is looking pretty cool. Uh, let's see, the exposure, yeah, that looks good right there. Then let's click OK, and then it'll give it a second, and then there we go. Look at that. I'm also going to change this sky image to be a little bit darker, so it matches the, the rest of the scene. So add a brightness contrast node, not a node, uh, adjustment layer, and then bring this down. And then also I'm going to bring the contrast up. There we go. Look at that. One last thing I'm gonna do is add a vignette because I love vignettes. I probably shouldn't add it to this one, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So how to add a vignette in Photoshop is you can um, do it in the camera raw filter or you can add a new layer, go to your gradient, click gradient, come up here and change it to this one and then just kind of drag it in like this on all the corners. And then you can play with the opacity. I'm gonna go pretty low that looks good right there and yeah you can do this in photo in blender I mean but it's a lot easier in Photoshop and that's why I did it so that's gonna be it for this tutorial thank you for watching if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like comment down below what you want to see in the next video and yeah I'll see you guys later thanks for watching goodbye